today on an all-new Girl Chat. In today's climate, is it still okay to ask a co-worker on a date? Uh-oh. And listen up, men. Male sex robots are a thing, and they are vying for your girl. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Plus, do you want advice from me or Lonnie? It's sweet versus salty. Are you ready to set these lovely people straight? Yes. Then, don't miss these deals. We have steals on The Real. Great price. That is great. The Real starts now. This is our time. Don't miss the This is our time. Grab a phone, it's coming again. Starting right now. Right now. It's our life, we got a choice. It's our time, so starting right now. Grab a phone, it's coming again. Starting right now. Right now. Right now. It's our life, we got a choice. Welcome to the real world! You guys are pumped! Hi! All right, you guys. I love it. Oh, thank you, guys. All right, who's ready for some girl chat? Yes! Ready. Yes, you stay ready, are. audience. Yes. Pumped. Okay, first up, we're a month away from Valentine's Day, and oh. if you're trying to get a date, one of the best places to look might be at work. Mm -hmm. However, following all the sexual harassment claims and allegations lately, people might be a little hesitant to approach someone they like in a professional setting. So to help people out, Huffington Post recently put out their tips on asking out a coworker in 2018. They suggested checking what HR policies are, in, you know, in place first, mm -hmm. maintaining professionalism no matter what their response is, and if they do say yes, going to get coffee as a first date. Oh. So ladies, do you think looking for love in the workplace is still a good idea due to the current climate? Yeah, because you know they'll get a check. That's why, you know. <laughs> you know they're employed at least. Exactly. You know, That's and so I've been true. trying to get a cameraman number one. Hey, Kevin. Hey. Hey. On his finger, but if you don't give me something, I'm gonna go over there to cameraman number two. Hey, okay. cameraman number two. <laughs> Wait, I'm not gonna lie. I actually think that I get it that there's a lot of things that are going on, and I think it's an amazing thing that people are speaking out yeah. about sexual harassment in the workplace. But I also think that we should acknowledge that there are also some great people that you could meet at your workplace. Yeah. And, and don't kill the love. I've heard incredible stories of people meeting in their workplace that have found the love of their lives there. Yeah. They have things in common. Yeah. You know, they get to go on lunch breaks together. It is possible. Yeah. So I don't want to kill the love at work. I it's just how you do it. Yes. Yeah. I think the workplace is actually the sauciest place to kind of meet somebody. Because think about it. You get dressed. Yeah. You prepare yourself. You bring your very best. Sometimes you bring the initiatives to make the company grow, it's empowering. I remember back when I was working for MAC Cosmetics, I would go visit like different, you know, makeup counters. And I worked at the Valley Fair Mall in the Bay Area, San Jose. And I remember there was this super sexy security guard who worked <laughs> at the booth across from, from, from my, my, my area, right? So every lunch, like I'd make sure I'd get my extra gloss on. I put on, you know, my twig liner all thick, my lips are all luscious. I'd walk over to the Auntie Anne's pretzel place I'd order a pretzel. Okay. I'd bend over a little bit further just to get my pretzel. Uh -huh. <laughs> did you, know you I mean? Did you ask him out? Did no, you get because a date? I didn't. I didn't know how to do that. I just flirted real. I put it on thick. So one day, uh -huh. I was standing there at the Mac counter. I remember it like it was yesterday. There was glass doors. He walks in. He's super tall. He's got this chisel. He leans over to the counter where I was standing. I was like, Is he? Is he gonna talk to me? Oh my god. So I backed up and I saw like his his little chin strap shave and he was like, Come real quick and I was like okay. okay and I leaned over and he was like do you guys sell eyeliner for dudes <laughs> wait was he wearing eyeliner at the time no Tam why would a man want to wear guy liner in the day what do you think uh, Oh, cause he had some things he liked to do at night. Is at it night. an important point of what to add on to, you know, the tips that the Huffington yes. Post? Yes, you understand make how... Oh, yeah. Make sure he's single, 
Make, make sure, sure he's straight. straight. Yeah, you know, yeah. make sure. That'll make Wait, somebody so uncomfortable have you guys for sure. Ever dated anyone in the workplace before? before? Yeah, all the oh, time. Oh, well, oh. it's easier when I work in the office. When I worked yes. as an engineer, because it was other engineers, and you work long hours, so it just makes sense. But like no. I said, make sure that you know that they're single and that they're available. If they do say no, then leave them alone. That's what causes, you yeah. know, the harassment. Oh, that is on. true. I tried. I tried it. I mean, being in actress, you're, you know, on a show. Right. And sometimes, you know, you work with that person all the time. Are and you can give us some behind the scenes No, juice? I'm not going to tell you who it was. Oh, sister, sister. Nobody knows. I'm not going to even tell you the show. But Ooh. I will say, you know, at first, it's really fun when nobody knows. Right. That's oh, what makes it yes. really exciting. It's yeah. secretive. But the moment people find out, you feel like all this pressure because they're like, okay, now if things don't work out and the show gets picked up, how are you guys gonna handle this? Yes. Oh. Is this gonna handle, you know, your character? Yes. Is this gonna handle the show? That's why well, me and Jeannie haven't started dating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things might get weird around yeah, here, you know? We, we know some of our cast and crew's dating, and we find yes. out, we, and we, we be like, we, oh, yes. really? You get yes. excited, though. Yes. Yes. But the number one it's thing, the cutest thing. But the number one thing you think of is, yes, how, how cute it is, but what if it doesn't work out? How are they gonna handle that? Once you have to come back, you know, to work. Luckily for well, me, our show, our show yeah. did it. But I hope it's I don't go that deep, we, though. But I this is how we find out, though. I usually find out because I follow everybody on Facebook. Oh. And that hurts my uh, feelings uh -huh. because I feel like the cast supposed to tell me and the crew Shh. supposed to tell no. me that they are seeing each other. Then I got to find out on Facebook, Chris. Come <laughs> You just outed <laughs> him. <laughs> Wait, Wait, okay. Now the pressure right. is on. Wait, I'm gonna <laughs> keep it real. If, if we're gonna keep it real. I'm gonna Sorry, say, Chris. My I... favorite part is not on Facebook. Right. My favorite <laughs> is at our Christmas parties. You know what I'm saying? Like after that third or fourth drink after midnight, they don't care. They be letting that love show. They don't even care. It's <laughs> out. It's loose. It's running them up. Oh, it's loose. All right. It'd be real loose. This yes. Christmas party. Okay. It'd be real loose. This? Wait, can I we keep it anything. real though? Yes. We always used to joke around how it was important to have like a crush at the workplace because it gives you something <gasps> exciting to come to Adrian. work to. Yes. So we all had like our little crushes. Like we're gonna be honest, even if we're married, like you could be oh like, my gosh, you have oh my a workplace I tell crush. my husband, Absolutely. like I'll be like, oh my god, this is the one I have a crush on. Like who he does not yes, care. Yes, of course. Okay. So I found out that the guy I had a crush on at work. He was cheating on me. <laughs> With another girl at work. And I was so mad. Was What's I his not name, mad? Chris? Chris? Chris. Chris. I know what's up, Chris. Yes. And I found out and I was Chris. so mad. Say hi, Chris. That's no, Chris no, right no. there. That That's was my work. That was my work boyfriend. Wait. Oh, he's so Wait. Yes. Yes. Tell him. Chris okay, Chris, I have to confess it to you. Are you ready? <laughs> So in briefing one day, they told me that you were dating somebody. <laughs> Chris, I was so mad. Is this, Chris, I was so mad. She was legitimately pissed. Is this pissed. when you yelled in briefing? I'll, I heard a very loud yell and everybody laughed and then everybody came out and started looking at me all crazy. Yeah, that, that, was, that was the so, day, that yeah, was, was the day. So mad, you guys, I even had my husband tell him because I, I sometimes can be mean to Chris, but that's the way I flirt. <laughs> so. Like, I even had my husband tell him, I'm like, babe, tell him that, like, the reason I mean to is because she's like, no, she really likes you. She tells me all the time. Like, Aww. But We're now very I very happy concept. for you, Chris. Thank Ever you since then, I've been nice to him. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Chris is taken. Oh, my goodness. Girl, I, we, did. we do have so work cute. crushes. Though. I enjoyed we that. Do, oh, who's your, do you have a work crush? Yes. yes. And do we some, have the you same You used one? to have one. I did. He left. Who? He was, was camera it? one. He's not here anymore. Oh, yeah, because that camera one is mine. That's yeah, the, no. But who's your work crush? My work crush happens to be also gay. He's Marshall. She has a thing. Marshall. The, the security love, guard, Marshall. I, I love Marshall so much. She's sensitive. He's thoughtful. Wait a minute. Where He's, is Marshall? What? That He's our PA. You have a crush on Marshall, no, too. I have a crush producer. on Marshall, too. You had a... I have a crush on Marshall. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Yeah. <laughs> Well, look I at will. what happens when we talk about okay. ro workplace romance. That I is love true. it. Okay. What I will say is this: it is important to be honest. If at any point somebody makes you feel uncomfortable, right. say it right then and there. Nip right. it in the butt. Yes. Keep it pushing. That's because honesty is the only way it's gonna work. If you're not interested, just say, 
I'm totally flattered, but I'm not interested. And, and move on to somebody else. And know how to handle the that. rejection. That's yeah, the thing. Yeah, that's right. So oh, be professional. Professional. And check in with HR. Just yes. in case. Just in case. Yeah. Well, if your workplace romance ends up working out <laughs> and you end up pregnant, the place to buy baby stuff is what? Ikea. I love Ikea. No, oh, all right. The furniture <laughs> giant recently revealed a creative new way for their pregnant customers to get a discount. Peeing on their ad. You guys, I'm not making this up. Oh my goodness. Trust me, I couldn't make this up if I wanted to. You heard me correctly. The ad for a crib can actually detect if a woman is pregnant, kind of like a pregnancy test, and it will reveal a discounted price for the crib. Now, once the woman pees on the ad, all she has to do is actually hand it to the cashier. Oh, in plastic? Like I don't, I don't know them kind of, I don't know. I know, that's the weird part. Yeah. Ladies, do you think this ad is creative? Or crass. I mean, it's. Yeah, I mean, if I'm I, working at IKEA, I'm wearing gloves now. That's, all right. Yeah. That's my thing. Dude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I, you have to hand it to them and say, "Hey, look, I'm pregnant." Yeah. And then I they know that you just eat on it. Yeah, oh. but guys, anything for a discount. This is kind of creative as hell. I want a discount. Right, it's good for the person getting a discount. Here. Yeah, but, but what about the cashier? Okay, I want to know, like, when do you put it down? Like, no, how do there's you do a little, it? there's a little thing that a you, dropper. so you pee in a, there's a little, no, you pee in a cup, like okay, a, a okay. cup at home, yeah. I guess, a random cup, and then uh, you get this little thing, you, you squeeze out a the dropper. Pee, a dropper, then you put it on this little area on the ad, and if you're pregnant, it'll tell you the price of Hold the up. crib wait, discounted. Wait, wait. So you're telling yes. me it's also a pregnancy test that reveals if you're pregnant? You're yes. getting a two for one and a yes. discount? Yes. Hell yes. That way. Yes. Now, do you know now how you many... Now that way. Now you know how many oh. men are going to be um, holding up ads I'm going to pee on this right here. Go on, let me see if you're really pregnant. Yeah. That's weird. That's I don't amazing, know. though. I, That's I don't weird. Know. Yeah, but I didn't think about it that way. That yes. is a free pregnancy test. <laughs> no, not really. Go to the doctor if you think no. you're pregnant, no. okay? Yeah. Just, how do you know? discount? You know, get the discount if it's not if it's if how do you know how sure? accurate it is too? Exactly. You know what I mean? Get the discount and worry about it later. See, if you're not that pregnant, you don't get that good of a discount. Oh. That pregnant? Oh my goodness. Oh my I gosh. Mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're not pregnant, then the discount won't be as Wait. good. I'm assuming. No? They should tell them at least to put it in a Ziploc bag because it's unsanitary not it only is. for the cashier but for other people that have to work with the cashier. You just out here walking around with people. Paper? Exactly. And how do you tell your pre how do you tell your parents and stuff you're pregnant by just holding up the ad? Look, mom and dad, I'm pregnant. That's that could just be look, here. mom and yeah. dad, I got a discount. Yeah. I can't no. By that's the way, weird. I'm pregnant. If it's really that awkward for you to do, you can always give a little acts of service. If you're pregnant, pee on the paper for your friend so your friend can get the discount, get hooked up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, smart. But why would they want? Okay. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just, just a, a crib, yeah. so yeah. it's not anything else. Yeah. So yeah, you can't be. get a discount on yeah, everything yeah. in the store. Yeah. yeah. It's just and a crib. And what if you don't even That's like it. the crib? It's not yeah. a futon. Yeah. yeah. Not, not face just to face crib. now. Well, you could get the discount on the crib, then you could put it up on eBay, say it was signed by Jeannie Mai, get a bigger <laughs> price from it, and go and buy some more things with signed it. Signed by Jeannie Mai. That's so much work. Always, that's too much work. Well, one group of people who love to advertise are lawyers, but sometimes a good lawyer is hard to find, so if you can't find one, here's the solution. Represent yourself. Mm. According to a recent article on WBBM.com, more people are t taking the law into their own hands by serving as their own lawyers in court. In fact, Chicago's Cook County reports that since 2015, 65% of their civil cases involved at least one person who represented themselves. So ladies, would any of you be willing to stand up in court and say, I represent myself? Hmm, I'm a lawyer. Cool. I, think, I would. Yeah. I actually wanted to be a lawyer. Yeah, you did. Yes, I, ever since I was little, I wanted to be a criminal lawyer. But then I went to school and realized to be the best uh, prosecutor, you would actually have to be a defense lawyer as well. And I didn't want to defend the, the criminals that actually yeah. did it, I wanted to put the bad guys in yes. jail. And also, political science. Uh, political science is no joke. It sure it's, is. Yeah. Abraham Lin Lincoln once said, he who represents himself has a fool for a client. And I believe that because people go to school, like you said, yep. it's hard. It goes it's to hard. School, especially if it's something. Now, if it's a civil case, 
that, mm -hmm. you know, you know, stuff you see yeah. on TV. Yeah. Okay. But if it's something really serious, you know, where there are real heavy charges, I would say get you some professional help. Don't yeah. go in there trying to, yes. you know, do yeah. it yourself. Have you guys ever seen the movie My Cousin Vinny? Yes. 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 I knew this was coming. I'm just saying, it looks pretty awesome. He figured it out. Yeah. And, and it worked out It was out a for movie. Him. Was that a I know. story? Hey, but I do think... are endless. I do think it's very important. I'm sure you guys have had this scenario where you get wrongly taken advantage of. Yes. And the only thing you have to do is go through the tedious tasks it takes to actually prove that you were wrongly, yeah. whatever, accused. Right. I got charged wrongfully $350 for something that I didn't know about. And I had to go and dispute it to the credit card. So the credit card company makes it this long thing of like, what date and time did it happen? What did they promise you in return? Where were you at? What have you gotten? And I filled out this long form with dates, times, and witnesses present of what I did. I even went back there and tried to rectify the situation. Whether or not I won, it's still like to be continued. But I feel proud about the fact that you got to stand up for yourself and you have to take the time to go ahead and hold yourself accountable to what is right because people will walk on you and try to make money off of you. Well, that's the thing, too. When you, with an, if, even if you have an attorney, you still work with that attorney and you, you tell do. them what you want and what your needs are. And I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, yes. fear, they feel like, okay, you're the expert, so you do everything. Yep. That's not how you're supposed to work you with You can do attorney. the research as well. Exactly. Yes. You still have to educate yourself and you should always Absolutely. know your rights. Yes. Mm -hmm. You should research if you actually are in a, in a court case. You should know what your rights are. You should look up other similar cases to yours yep. so you can know what they did. And that's important to educate yourself always and not just depend on, on the, the lawyer, lawyer but yep. actually know stuff yes. about yourself. Exactly. Exactly. So I don't, I don't necessarily agree with representing, especially, you know, I have a lot of cousins. They know the law better than most attorneys, but I still won't let them represent me, okay? Of course. You know what I mean? Like, you, you just shouldn't be afraid to stand no, no. up for something. Yourself, that, yes. Right. Yes. Yes. I'm, a, I'm a great arguer, I'm not going to lie. I think it's a hood rat skill, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I could fight anything. Like, I think it's actually a skill you pick up in the hood. Like, you could argue anything yes. with anything, and you could just keep going and keep going. <laughs> That's you a do, gift God has debate, blessed me with. You, I'm not going to deny it. You do debate well, and you know how to take that L. That's why I like you. If you, yes, you know you lose, true. then you'll, you'll ease out you of know, it. You know, you know how you don't, deny you don't take the L? How? You just act like, wow, I never saw it that way. And you act like you suddenly became enlightened. And then you didn't actually lose. You actually just joined. <laughs> so, you've all heard of doing the robot, right? You know, eh, 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 eh. All right, that Poppy. term might soon have a whole new meaning because the New York Post is reporting that dashing male sex robots might one day end up replacing men. Mm -hmm. Get this, Real. later this year, company Real Bo Realbotics will begin rolling out male robots with bionic penises oh to my specifically gosh. target a female <gasps> audience. CEO Matt McMullen says that the bionic penis will feel better than a Ow. vibrator, and that you can even pick the size of the piece Ow. that works for you. Lord so ladies, mercy. would you get turned on by something that you would actually have to turn on? I like that. I, 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 I like that. Okay. Look, I get the concept. Process. It's, it's pretty much a large, full-size sex toy. I yeah. get that. Uh -huh. But turned on? No, the robot is not gonna turn me on. If I'm already turned on, I might use the robot. <laughs> but the robot isn't going to turn me on. The things that turn me on are wit, um, someone's personality, someone having a sarcastic sense yeah. of humor. Like, those are the, like, the person's character yeah. turns me on. Well, a plastic dude is not gonna turn me on. Yeah, this is true. I don't know, I like... I like spontaneous sex. Like, he's not gonna pick me up and push me up against the wall. <laughs> And he, I need to see what the instructions are on no, this robot. You know what I mean. That's when true, they yeah. flip you in the mold yeah. and stuff like that. What's the best? You I know what a robot kind of skills can't know. Robot I know what robots and people do. I just didn't know my own Tam Tam does that. <laughs> Hello. Jeannie, I got two kids. How do you think I got pregnant? <laughs> but you, you know, you told us. I take she... credit for the second one, but that's a whole but other story. But no, she told us she did it in the closet. It get freaky in that closet, it don't sure you? It sure does. But also, I just like to, to feel the breath, like yes. that warmth yes. of the man. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you, when they start... You can feel that with a robot. You can hear that vibration. Like, no. You gonna no. cuddle with the robot after? Ah. Yeah. 
What are you gonna do? No, this is actually very interesting because Men sometimes, I don't know if men always realize, or I, I think men should appreciate more how much we love all of what a man yes. has. Yes. Not just that. That's, yes. that's actually the last part of, it's the cherry on I top. I like for him yes. to make me some eggs and cook and pour me some Hennessy. Yeah. That's what I like. So yeah. I, the robot yeah. can't afterwards. do that, you know. Yeah. That's you the laugh. afterwards. And, and he can't cuddle afterwards either. No. Yeah. Well, you I'd can, love to I guess, it. hold on to the robot. I'm not holding on to no plastic <laughs> like, robot. And like, hold on just... and feel it, you know. But, okay, do you guys get what I'm saying? I do get the purpose of this. Yes. If you are in the mood and you've already been turned on, yeah, it's basically you know, jump it, up on the robot. Well, I know yeah. it's <laughs> Might be a good time. It's basically just a big vibrator. Correct. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yes. And I mean, men have had blow up dolls for a really long time. Yeah. We have been begging for equality, y'all. So okay. here it is. Well, I don't how would want you feel that. if your husbands or your boyfriends brought you this for a gift? Hell no. You wouldn't like it? No, why? Why not? We enjoy each other already. <laughs> What's the point of having that? Now, I think that changes the feel? scenario. That Red flag if yes. your boyfriend or your husband is bringing you another plastic man into the bedroom. <laughs> Yes. Right. Okay, okay, I know and no. I get what you're Maybe saying. Maybe he don't want to do it to you no more. What, what are you gonna say to me? But Julie? all I'm saying is, I do think, I was in a 10-year marriage, I do think that when a man brings home some toys and some props... Right. Toys? Yes, I'm not game. A, not a Toys, man. not I a am. full robot. But, okay, wait. <laughs> what about a girl robot instead of a man robot? No, I want a boy. That's what I'm saying. Okay, wait. Boy? Women, women, let's just keep it real, okay? Right. Okay. Some women enjoy having toys help some uh -huh. things yeah, for yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yes. Have you ever brought that into the relationship sure. with your man? Well, it's the same thing. That's well, sure, but it's, it's not that exactly. big. It's not that big. It's just a little pause. A toy is a toy, ain't it? It's just a big toy. Yeah, no. but the toy has a face. Yes. I don't want the toy to have a face. Absolutely. Connected. Thank you. All right. Some more girl chat. Hold the phone. It's time for the real hotline bling. Hey. Caller. Hey. Hi. Hey, girl, what's your name? My name is Regina Amaro. Hi, Regina Amaro. Where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Houston, Texas. What's up, hey. Houston? How you feeling, right. Houston, Texas? How's your New Year's going, sweetie? So far, it's been so great. My my family's wealthy. All right. Oh, okay. That's amazing. No. <laughs> that is good. God is healthy. good. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, are you a, a sex robot type of person, or do you think you would get that? Um, I'm not. <laughs> that, that, is a, that is a great first question yes. when you meet someone, right? <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? Are you into sex robots? <laughs> I just wanted to so know. So why wouldn't you be into sex robots? Because you're going to join us for some girl chat. Yes. Well, to me, um, I feel like once, like, I'm married, I wouldn't need a sex doll. Hey, exactly. Hey. Good answer. Yes. Because you got the real thing, right? Yeah. There's no yeah. Why it. do I need what I can have in person? Exactly. exactly. Do you have a boyfriend right now? Yes, currently. Oh, how long have y'all been going out? <laughs> it's very well. He's a really good guy. I've been knowing him for four years. And okay. we just made it recently, like, more official. That's oh, awesome. Good. All right. Right. This is what it feels like exactly. to be in girl chat. They get all up in your business. I know, exactly. we don't like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we <laughs> want to keep your new year going strong, so we're going to give you the chance to win some money, honey. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So for $100, what is the name of the Reels Pet Fish? Fernando? Yes! yes. For one hundred dollars more, do you know his full name? Um, I'll give you a hint. He's part Asian. Yes, and part of uh, and, Lonnie's and, crush. And my crush. I, I'm just gonna let you know I don't remember his full <laughs> name, so don't feel bad. I know I have him. I'm following him on Instagram, but that's all I remember. Don't you follow him on Instagram, name. so we'll give you the hundred dollars yeah. yes. anyway. Okay, that was nice. Yes. Okay, we give that to you. But yes. his name, his full name is <laughs> Fernando Idris Goldstein Lee. So now Lee. you know, okay? Oh, but enjoy your $100, Regina. You get $200. Yes. 
do it over yes. Two hundred. We gave yes. her extra. Yes. We gave her extra one hundred. Yes. So you just got home from a trip. You're tired. You're grumpy, and in your hand is a suitcase that needs unpacking. What do you do? Well, if you don't unpack immediately, then you, my friend, are an unpacking procrastinator. Oh. But if you're looking to change your ways, listen up. Carol Margolis of SmartWomenTravelers.com says to put your clothes in the hamper and your toiletries in the bathroom as soon as yes. you get home. Yes. Oh. That way, you have the majority of your stuff already taken care of. I'm still not unpacked from oh. my Mexico trip, y'all. Really? But no, no, I, real I talk? Think, because I think I don't want to forget that trip was oh so gosh, awesome. So and I enjoyed it. And I was with my girl, Sherry Shepard. Yeah. And we had just the best time. And I just want to keep that memory. And that's why I think oh, that's, that's so her. Sweet. You're holding on. Yeah. By it's the just way, holding on. I enjoyed your pictures so much. And yeah. videos. Well, really that's good. one of the pictures. And she decided to t do a photo shoot. Yeah. At, um, as, by as, the as a girl yeah. should. But that's a wig. And this yes. is what she decided to do. She decided to take a swim. So me being Lonnie. <laughs> Swimming, y'all. She didn't she even kept get swimming. swimming. And we had to, we had to blur out her boobs. We were at Secrets Resorts. Oh. We had a great time. Oh, it ain't time, a secret no more. Let me tell you. It ain't no secret because she, I'm telling you, I, secure your wig. That's the hashtag. <laughs> secure your wig 2018. Thank you, Shade Room, for that. That is funny. Funny. <laughs> Robbie Rogers wig, so it's expensive, you guys. I thought she you had it the wig on. Friend out. And I saved it, yeah, and I saved even saved her wig. lashes. It's on the side, too. So. Oh, I see that. <laughs> no, that's real. When you lashes very get wet, it's crap. <laughs> Like, God, that's was funny. she upset with you when you did that? No, she had a good time. I mean, okay. We had a yeah. good time. But she, she was glad. Time. She saved the yeah, expensive she saved wig. Exactly. Because I was like, that's expensive. That's like two. <laughs> okay, but like, let me ask you still, okay? I'm just saying it because just, just sanitation wise. Right. It's your clothes. You've sweated in it. It's coming from another country. Yes, you, ma'am. You got to unpack it and you at least have to get it into the wash, like hot water immediately. I opened it up, so that's what I did. I have opened it up, but I keep so looking for it. So now it's just open from trip. Mexico? It's you airing just, out. You know yeah. that people can, I mean, I'm being serious. Yeah. I got a staph infection from <gasps> coming home from Sapa, Vietnam, because I just, you know, probably brought home, like, you know, there's Some mites stuff. and things like that mm. in your clothing. Yeah, that she get was it scratching her leg for like two months, and I'm like, girl, go get that checked and out. Was, and like, it turned wrong? out it was a staph infection, which can be very dangerous. Yeah, At the end of the day, though, you have to unpack your clothing, also not only for sanitation reasons, but don't you feel like you gotta clean, like, you know, No, I just fresh? don't wanna forget the trip, Jeannie. Just let me live for a little, little don't, uh, don't. another oh, week. Don't, another week. Another week. week. Do not all that. Print the picture and put it up on your wall. <laughs> You okay, gotta, I'm not gonna fry it. Are you, what do you do? You, oh, you leave them stacked, Tom. Yeah. See, okay. Tom, I'm unsanitary. So my, uh, it's, <laughs> no, it's not unsanitary. I don't even bring the luggage into my house. See? I actually leave it in my garage, and then when I actually have a day off, like this weekend, okay. that is when I'm going to unzip it. I put everything in the wash, and I actually have two separate toiletries. I don't use the same toiletries that I have at I home. I don't either. As the okay. ones that I yeah. travel with. So I have them in my toiletry bags. Okay. That are already set. Like, okay. I have everything from different hair brushes, yep. different yep. face wash, everything. Yep. Are you unpacked? Uh, no. I'm, I'm one of those procrastinators Ladies. as well. Ladies! Okay. I am. Well, I just, we learned I... something from Jeannie today. Please. We have to unpack for sanitary reasons. Sanitary reasons? Okay. okay, fine. You're good I'm just for lazy. something, Jeannie. It's also your right, clothing. You spent good money on your clothing. Your clothing is like your kids. Okay. Take care of your kids. Take care of your clothing. Take care of your fashion. I... What could be better than having that one friend who constantly gives you the best advice? Well, how about having two friends with two different takes? First, you get hit with that sweet, sweet sugary advice, and then comes that spice to top it off and make it oh so nice. Lucky for you, we've got Tam Tam and Lonnie to hear you and set you straight on your sticky situations. Listen in, this is Sweet versus Salty. <laughs> You've sent in your questions. Now, mm -hmm. Tam Tam and Lonnie, are you ready to dish out your advice? Yes. Okay. The first story comes from Mary Gunning, all the way from Vancouver, Canada. Here's her question. Hi, ladies. I have a guy problem. 
I have a major crush on a guy who takes my bus. We spend about three hours together every day because the commute is so long. Mm -hmm. We've gotten to know each other really well and we've become good friends. He gives me small hints that he likes me, like he gets mad if someone takes the seat next to me and won't let anyone else sit beside me, him, except me. But I don't know what to do about it. I really like him, but how do I take the next step? So Tam Tay, I need your sugary sweet take on this predicament. All right, so from the picture that you're painting, I feel as if he kind of likes you yeah. and he's waiting on you. You know how sometimes guys need that extra push or the extra confidence to take the next step? So what I would do is I would, you know, sit next to him and maybe in a cute, fun way say, I really, really enjoy our conversations. What if we continue these conversations off the bus over some coffee, right? Pretty okay. simple. That's good. I usually see that as a win-win situation because he's gonna give you the answer you're either looking for or you're not. And if he doesn't, you're not wasting your time yes. fantasizing about him and you can just move forward. True right? that. Yes, Lonnie, what's your take on it? Okay, I hear what Tam Tam's saying. What she's saying, girl, is next time you get on that bus, pop a Tic Tac in your mouth, look at him and say, we doing this, what's up, all right? <laughs> Yes! That's exactly it, Lonnie. I think that's what yes. Sam was saying. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got another one for you ladies. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. All right. It's from Janet Huerta in Ruskin, Florida. Okay. She watches us on Fox 13. All right. Fox 13. All right. Here it goes. Ladies, I need your help. I married my best friend and we are a completely happy couple. We've been together for over 11 years and have a five-year-old son. Okay. My husband is a bartender and loves his job. He's a very social person, he's nice and has a great sense of humor. I visited him at work and met his coworkers. I trust him, but I don't know how to handle him working at a bar with beautiful women. Hmm. Hmm. Some women don't care if men are married or taken and they just make moves. So I'm afraid this will happen to him. We've talked about this situation and he tells me that work is work and that he's there to make money and I shouldn't worry. But it's hard for me to accept. How would you handle a situation like this? Tamara, how would you sweeten up Janet's situation? Okay, so what I'm hearing is that you know, they're, they're really a happy couple. So if he hasn't given you any reason to worry, why are you worrying? There are a lot of women who actually create unnecessary drama mm -hmm. based off of their own personal insecurities, honey. Rich. I think that's probably what's going on here. You are insecure, so you have to deal with that and love yourself and trust in your husband. He's already given you the answer. I like Don't that. worry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Lonnie, does yes. this give you any salty feel? Yes, it does. I understand what Tamara is saying. What she's saying is don't sweat the small stuff. But just in case you sweat the small stuff, put on that red dress, put on them high heels, go to that bar and have a drink with your man. After about two and a half martinis, just make sure you shout, hands off my man, bitches, all right? And you can blame it on the alcohol. Yes. I love that is hysterical. That is the perfect balance of advice right there between Tam and Lonnie.